Okay, this is a really hard video to make, so I just want you guys to hear me out for a second. I'm not going to try and convince you to stop bright line eating if that's what you're doing. I'm not going to try and convince you to do exactly what I'm doing. I just want to share my personal experience and my journey because that is what I've been sharing here all along. So if you are new here, I've lost around 70 pounds so far in my weight loss journey. I started around 220 pounds. I am 5'5", and now I am under 150. I am ranging between 145 and 147 right now. So that's where I'm at. I've lost all the weight. I am in a normal BMI. I have 20 more pounds that I'd be happy to lose, but I'm not too worried about it because I am now in a healthy BMI and all of my markers are there for good health. Now, why did I decide to quit Bright Line Eating when it has been such a successful tool for me is complicated, <laughs> but I just want you to stick with me, stick around, watch the video and see kind of what my experience has been. I'm not trying to convince you to not do Bright Line Eating. I'm also not trying to convince you to do Bright Line Eating or to follow what I'm doing currently. <laughs> I'm honestly just sharing my journey and that's what I've been doing all along. So I want to continue to do that with you guys. Hopefully you'll stick with me through my journey, even if I'm not doing the exact same method as you at this point. So first of all, why on earth have I decided to quit Bright Line Eating when it has been so successful for me? I have lost a bunch of weight, right? I think what it has come down to it was really a sudden realization that I had, an epiphany, if you will. So in the last week or two, I have had two binge days, which are not pretty. Anyone who has had a binge issue before knows that you just feel like you can't stop putting crap in your mouth. So I had been crystal basing with Bright Line Eating, which means following the food plan exactly, for over 50 days at that point. And I went off plan, I binged completely one night, and I just, you know, I was like, okay, that's fine. One day I'm going to get right back on it. And sure enough, I had two days of perfectly bright lines, which means no sugar, no flour, measured quantities and eating only at mealtimes. So I was two days bright after my binge, not deviating from the plan at all. And then the following day I started to binge again and I had a realization on that day. I started thinking, why am I binging? This is like the same as before I started this entire weight loss journey. You would think at this point after doing Bright Line Eating for two years that I would have some improvement on my binge eating. I have all these new good habits that I've built up. I am now healthy. I don't have insulin resistance. Like all the hormones in my body should be working correctly at this point. I don't have fat blocking them because I now am at a normal healthy weight. I don't have tons of excess fat um, affecting insulin or affecting the way that hormones are regulated. So why am I having this binge issue? And if you've listened to any dietitians or any binge eating specialists, most of them will say that to have a diet that is extremely restrictive is going to negatively affect your binging. Now, I have always talked about bright line eating. You've probably seen some of my past videos. I've talked about how bright line eating goes with binge eating, how it has helped me overcome binge eating, how it's helped other people overcome binge eating. But I think last week when I had this day where I was binging as if nothing had ever happened, nothing had changed. I was back in that 220 pound body binging my life away. In that moment, I thought to myself, bright line eating has not cured me of binge eating. It has not helped me overcome binge eating. And if you think of binge eating as like a disease, okay, same as, I don't know, Alzheimer's or something. We're always looking for the cure for Alzheimer's. So I'm looking for the cure for binge eating, right? Um, and bright line eating took away the symptoms of binge eating. If you had seen me crystal basing on bright line eating, I wasn't binging. I wasn't having urges to binge. I wasn't, you know, X, Y, Z. I, all of the symptoms of binge eating were gone, right? But as soon as I stopped taking that pill, the bright line eating pill every single day, if I ever missed a day of my pill, my bright line eating pill, then that bright, that binging just came right back. 
right? So it, it's as if, if I missed a day of my pill that was curing the symptoms, right? Not curing the actual root issue, the root cause, then if I missed that day with that Brightline eating pill, then it was like binge. The issues were all right there. The symptoms of binge eating were right there. So I had that epiphany and I was like, okay, I should actually listen <laughs> to dietitians, nutritionists, experts in the field of binge eating that say having a restrictive diet is not going to cure your binge eating. It's not going to help you actually overcome it. It will help cover up the issue for a little while, which I think is what Brightline Eating did. So I'm not hating on Brightline Eating. It got me to where I am. If I had not done Brightline Eating and taken that pill every single day, I wouldn't have been able to keep the symptoms of binge eating away to the point that I was and lose all the weight. So I credit Brightline Eating for my weight loss. No question, it is an excellent weight loss structured program to be able to get weight off, right? It is not a binge eating recovery program unless you take the pill every single day for the rest of your life. And I have never been someone that could say I'm never going to eat sugar or flour again with Brightline Eating. I've never been able to say that because I always knew that someday I was going to and I wanted to and that I would. <laughs> so that is where I have been. I've never been someone that says I'm never going to do that again. But if you are one of those people that is really going to do it 100% for the rest of your life and keep taking that pill every single day, then sure, your binge eating is not going to come back. In BLE, sometimes we scoff at the dietitians or doctors or whoever that say it's too restrictive and we're like, but really, who needs sugar and flour in their life? It's not like that actually is adding to your health in any way. But the research is there for binge eating that the restriction causes binges if you're ever off plan, even in the slightest bit. And sometimes it's, you know, you just can't stick to it 100% for extended periods of time, as I know lots of people in the Brightline Eating community struggle with, is sticking to it 100%. The crystal vasers are few and far between, and I am just so proud of those people that can stick to it 100% because that means maybe they're never going to have that bad binge. They're going to stick with it. They're going to keep taking that bright line eating pill and they're going to be, you know, 100% symptom free of binge eating for the rest of their lives, which is fabulous. 100%. And it is not unhealthy to not have sugar and flour in your life. So all for that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything bad against that. I've gained great things from bright line eating. I already mentioned my weight loss. I briefly mentioned my health markers that are just 100% better than they have been. I got my insulin tested. I am no longer insulin resistant. I'm no longer pre-diabetic. I'm no longer overweight or and obese. I am no longer diabetic. I had gestational diabetes my first pregnancy. And then because of bright line eating and improving my health, my second pregnancy, I was diabetes free. And all of these things are because of bright line eating. So I'm in no way saying bright line eating is a bad or negative thing. I'm just saying it does not actually cure binge eating, which is at this point what I want to focus on. So because I had in the last week or two, those two binge days, I started to see and kind of think about what my actual priorities are. So yes, it's a priority to be in a healthy, physically healthy body, which I am now. My body is now physically healthy. It is also important to me to feel like I have control over my life and not somebody else dictating exactly what I do. I have confidence that I can make good choices and good decisions for my life and I don't feel like Brylin Eating was telling me that I was capable of that. Brylin Eating kind of tells you that you're trapped a little bit by your brain and that Kind of no matter what you do, you're always going to be influenced by sugar and flour in that way. That is one of the things that I had to come to terms with as something I don't actually agree with. And that through seeing the examples of other people that have gone through this before, that have major binging in their past, there are people like that that have lost all of the weight and are not restricting themselves currently to avoid all sugar and all flour and all high carb products or that kind of thing. 
There are people that eat in moderation, that come from a binging background, have lost the weight and can have kept it off. So that is what I'm aiming for, right? I've now lost the weight and I'm super grateful to Brightland Eating, but I now want to focus on overcoming the binge problem by moderation. And I have always been someone that says, I can't just eat one, I like go crazy, right? But I think that now I do have habits in place, things like not snacking, things like prepping food so that I always have good healthy food on hand to make those decisions easier. Things like planning your meals the night before um, and making sure that you've got, you know, your day set up for success. Those are the kind of habits that I've learned through Brightline Eating that I feel like can help me now moving forward into what I call moderation mode. So right now I'm operating in moderation mode. I'm on day four right now. And I will say it has not been perfect. Today I overate. It was the first out of the four days that I've overeaten. So the first three days I didn't overeat. I felt very in control of everything. Today, I wouldn't say that I felt out of control, but I made worse food choices than I did the previous three days. So that is something that I just need to take and learn from. So what I'm trying to do is I'm taking each day, just going to look at it at the end of the day and say what went well and what can I learn from this to improve and become more aligned with my goals tomorrow. Another thing that I'm going to take away from my Brightline eating journey and take with me now is looking out for things that trigger me. We talk a lot about being triggered in Brightline eating um, and I feel like for me, I now can recognize things that might have triggered a downward spiral. And that is gonna be important as I make adjustments and tweak things for my plan moving forward to be able to see like, oh, what triggered me to overeat? So today, for example, I overate. What triggered my, me to overeat? Well, I was bored. I was procrastinating doing you know, productive things. <laughs> and I had a food that I haven't had in a long time, a really long time. And I really liked it and I wanted more and I didn't eat more of that because I was like, nope, I told myself one serving, but I ate more of something else and then I ate more of something else, right? So it kind of spiraled that way. And so because of that, I can look at those triggers and think about that next time those same triggers come up for me and hopefully make better decisions moving forward. Another BLE takeaway is that shame is not gonna help you. Zero, zip, shame has no place in anyone's weight loss journey, whether you're doing bright line eating or just you know counting calories or doing intermittent fasting or alternate day fasting or keto or whatever the heck you're doing. Shame is not gonna help. It has no place in your journey. So show shame to the door. You don't need to feel guilty or shameful or like you need to lie about anything you're doing because we're all on a journey, we're all taking different paths and we're trying to figure out the best way to do things for us. So don't let shame in, <laughs> it has no place. Bad habits run so deep, they are hard to overcome. And so inevitably you're gonna fall, you're going to fail, you might call it, and you're just gonna to have to pick yourself back up again and try again because the only thing really that all of the people that are successful in weight loss, all the only thing that they have in common is consistency. And not the consistency of doing 100% well all the time, the consistency of getting back up when they fall. That is the only thing that they are consistent on. If you look at anyone that's had success, that is their consistent thing, that they pick themselves up when they fall down. So it doesn't matter if you failed a bajillion times, which like, Okay, so I'm starting over new right now. <laughs> After I've been doing something and fully supporting it for two years, right? I don't count that as a fail, like 0% fail I at all. I view it as learning and growing and figuring out what I need to do next. Not what anyone else needs to do, but what is gonna work best for my journey. So I hope that you will follow along that journey as well and continue to support me in that. I know it's different than a, what a lot of you, you know, do as my subscriber base. A lot of you are in Bright Line Eating. So I just hope that you continue to come with me on this journey. I hope to support you guys still in your journeys. 
I'm not trying to like shut out the Brightly eating world by any means, but I just realized that this is what I need to do at this point to help me overcome binge eating now that I'm at a healthy weight. Another huge BLE takeaway is that exercise is not for weight loss necessarily. It is for mental health and for feeling strong. And obviously you get physical health benefits from exercise, but really the mental health benefits trump everything else. And for weight loss, it really is food that makes the difference. And I'm totally taking that with me. <laughs> I'm not going to try and exercise to combat calories or anything like that. I still firmly believe that food is where weight happens and exercise is where shape happens. So I am not changing anything that way. I'm gonna to continue to do my BBG workouts that I know and love. And I think I will add in running just because the mental health benefits of running are super great. And I have enjoyed running in the past. With Bright Line Eating, I couldn't really keep up a running regimen because I feel like the calories were a little bit too low. I would have had to add in food to really keep up running. So I'm going to start running now, which I'm excited. I did like five minutes today at a super slow pace and it felt so good. It felt so good to run and I'm excited to continue that moving forward. All right, that is basically it for this video. I just wanted to clue you guys in on what is going on in my health journey, let you know how I'm doing, what I'm changing. I know on Instagram, I kind of left you guys hanging. I was like, I'm leaving Instagram for a week. I need to figure things out. And it was really just because I started to have that epiphany and I was like, wow, I need a little bit of time to process this and kind of get my flow going and get moving on that. I actually will be releasing a video on Saturday showing my first week of this transition away from Brightline Eating into a more moderate approach. And I hope you will take a look at that video. It's gonna go through the first seven days of my transition away from Brightline Eating and kind of how I've done that, how it's been going and all of the things. So I hope you join me for that video. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you have not already. I cannot wait for you to join me in this journey and I will see you soon.